Now, according to news reports, Pastor Brunson is the 19th prisoner, perhaps hostage is the right word, freed by the Trump administration. Here's Pastor Brunson praying with the president at the White House over the weekend. Take a look. Lord God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on President Trump, that you give him supernatural wisdom to accomplish all the plans you have for this country and for him. I ask that you give him wisdom and how to lead this country into righteousness. Joining us now is Pastor Brunson himself. Uh, Pastor, I'm so glad you're out. I know how many worked on your behalf, talked about your case often, Jay Sekulow, the president. You were held for 18 months and had no reason, no understanding why, and you were held in a cell designed for eight, and there were 21 people, correct? Uh, yes, for part of that time, it was a very crowded, crowded cell, and part of the time I was also in isolation, so it was a very difficult time. And I was surprised because uh, I had never really considered prison as a possibility uh, and counted the cost for that. Yeah, uh, how were you treated, sir? I was treated well by the prisoners I was with. And they were, uh, they were not of your faith? They weren't, and that was one of the very difficult things, is that I was isolated by culture and by language, but especially by religion, and it was very difficult to be the only Christian among them. When you found out what you were being held for, which was your faith, what did you think? Well, what was surprising is that uh, they told me that I was being held for terrorism and for trying to overthrow the government. And the truth is that we had been preaching Jesus Christ there. That's why we were in Turkey uh, for 23 years up until that time, is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with Turks. We've done that openly and never had a problem. So yeah. it was very shocking to be accused of terrorism. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and also, but it really came down to your Christian faith in many ways, which is, um, and I thought your prayer was extraordinarily touching for, with the president. I want to talk, what was your worst moment? Because I can imagine that when you lose your freedom, you pretty much lose everything, especially in a foreign country, not being known why, not knowing why you're even being held and, you know, not having anyone to share your faith, your values with you. When was your lowest moment? Well, when I was arrested and it kept going on and on and it seemed that uh, there was no way out and I lost a lot of hope. And what helped me, uh, I began to see that there was value in my suffering, especially as time went on. I saw that many people around the world began praying for me. And I began to see that God was involved in this. How did you find out about this. that? How did you hear about that? Well, this was especially through my wife because uh, she was the only contact I really had with the outside world. And she could visit me for about half an hour every week uh, through a glass and speaking on the phone. And she would bring encouragement to me and tell me that people were praying for me. And as I learned that, I began to see that God was involved in this and that God was going to do something with my suffering that had Why value. Why did you say this morning in an interview, I'm one of the most hated men in Turkey, probably? Well, I've been accused of trying to overthrow the government, of uh, being uh, aligned with the, the Fethullah Gulen terrorist movement, also being part of the PKK, which is a Kurdish guerrilla uh, terror movement. And also, I was blamed for the economic problems Turkey had. So uh, there are probably are not too many people who like me there right now. Pastor, let's talk about that moment that uh, touched a lot of people. Um, you're a man of, of great faith and, and obviously a strong Christian, and you prayed for the president. Let's talk about that moment. Well, it's something that we had hoped to be able to do. Uh, my wife had uh, for some time wanted to uh, pray some verses over him uh, from Isaiah, just uh, asking for the Spirit of God to come upon him. And before we went to meet him, when we learned we would be able to visit him in the White House, we prayed together, my wife and I, and asked God to give us that opportunity to pray for the president. And it's a great privilege. I think many pastors would love to do it. And our president needs prayer. Uh, you know, Pastor, we're glad you're home uh, for you and your family. It was a very touching moment. I think all of us, I'll start with me, uh, could use more God in our lives. And um, I think you impact a lot of people. Welcome home, sir. We're glad to have you back. Thank you. And I want to thank uh, you for keeping me in the news while I was in prison. I appreciate it. Very welcome to do it, sir. Uh, Jay Sekulow did an amazing job. The president stood strong. And thank God you're here.